Hi everybody, my name is Sheila Landry. I'm an artist, designer, and teacher, and I work in all kinds of mediums. Let's see what we're going to work on today. Alrighty, today we're going to paint this cute little candle tray that I call Snow Flurries. This is a new design of mine, and it's quite easy and fun. And where I live here in Nova Scotia, it's just starting to look like winter, so there's plenty of time to do some fun painting. Um, this is one of my candle tray pieces. It's a two-piece wood tray, and the inside is cut on a bevel, so you glue it in and you push it back a little bit, and then you sit your candle on it. And I make this in a couple different sizes. I'll show you how to glue it together. That's why I didn't glue this sample together. We'll do that at the end. And um, you could fit your jar candles, like the Yankee candles in it or any anything. But it makes a nice little centerpiece. And I like the wide border um, for decorative purposes for your winter table. It looks really nice. But for the class here, I am going to use a smaller version. This is the 8th inch um, tray. This is a 12 inch tray. They're both on my website, so I'll leave links for them. And we're going to paint the little snowmen. And I'm going to start with the background. And in order to do that, I use a paint roller because it goes on easier. And we're just going to base the top of the tray. We're going to keep it, I'm going to call it a tray probably the whole um, class time. We're going to keep it simple. Um, a lot of people ask me if I seal my MDF. And since I paint in acrylics on MDF, the acrylic paint, the first layers of the acrylic tends to seal the paint. So I don't find the need for a sealer. But for this, I want to um, begin with using... A nice neutral gray color because what it will do it will it will act as a sealer but it will also um, like neutralize this brown color that MDF has and your colors will look truer on it and in order to do that I use a plate or flat surface this is a plate I got at the dollar store which I actually use a lot for a palette it works really well because it cleans so well and I had wet my roller and squeezed it out with a paper towel around it so you want it damp but not wet you don't want it drippy because if you put it too drippy you're going to put too much water in the paint and it's going to cause the grain to raise and it'll be a mess um, but you don't want to dry because then the paint will absorb into it and it won't clean well and it won't move the paint around well. So I'm going to leave it on a wider shot while I show you. I'm picking up some of the paint and leaving it together and just go over it. And obviously that is not enough paint. The first coat always takes the most. Use a the roller. There we go. And just go over the top. We're not going to worry about the edge because the edge is going to be blue anyway. And same in that inside edge if you have a two piece design. Now I designed this so it could go on just about anything. You really don't even need um, a line tracing. So in the pattern I did show a bunch of the little faces I did and you just want a kind of even coverage for it like that and it'll only take one coat even if it's a little bit streaky or if it shows through a little bit that doesn't matter okay so here we're at and we have to let this dry completely before we continue on okay so I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to clean out my roller with soap and water right away. And then you'll be able to use it many times over. And I'll be back for after that. Okay, everything is dry. We're ready to do the 
the background for our um, tray. I'm going to pull this in just a little bit for you so you can see it a little better. There we go. Let's see. There we go. And to start off, I'm going to use Joe Sonia's Magic Mix, which is a glazing medium, and it's kind of like a paint extender for your acrylic paints. And I like it because it dries matte, it doesn't dry real shiny, and it, um, it helps the paint move, it gives the paint a little more transparency, and it keeps a longer open dry time for drying. So it's like an all-around kind of glaze. And I've been using that lately, and I really like using it. So um, the brush I'm going to use is a three-quarter inch oval brush. I dampened it, and then I took a paper towel and blotted a little bit of extra. Again, we don't want to go in with a dry brush because you're absorbing too much of the medium, and it could get it gets stickier. I like to start with a damp brush, but not a wet brush. Okay. I put some of the um, Magic Mix into a little um, container here. Picked up a good amount. And I'm going to start moving this around on the tray. I want to coat the whole tray with this. So that it has a good base and the paint will move on it, okay? And because the Magic Mix is like a little bit of a retarder and slower to dry, it will help it stay wet a little longer. Okay, the next thing I did was I put my colors on my palette. This is the ceramic palette again, you could use anything. And this is Tropical Blue deoxazine purple and winter blue and what I'm going to do I'm going to put this on this side so you can see is pick up a little of the magic mix and just touch the brush in it and I'm going to start moving it around on the tray you want light color And you don't want to overdo with this. You see how it, it moves the paint very nicely. You want this to look like a cold winter day. And the difference between using um, this type of medium and water with acrylics, you could use water to thin your acrylics, but then you're going to um, compromise the adhesion of it sometimes. Okay, so just like that. Less is more on this. We want it to look like a cold winter day. So I'm going to go back in my back in my Joe Sonia's medium, my magic mix, and without cleaning my brush, I'm going to pick up a little of the purple. And you can see how little I'm taking. I'm not I'm just touching the corner of the brush in. And I'm going to start to add that into the surface. Don't worry about the little corners there if you're using the two-piece thing because we're going to be shading that anyway. And again, less is more. You want these to be blended in a little bit, but not all the way. And we want our background dark enough so that the snowmen will shine, show up on them, the white snowmen. This is why I didn't use a white base. I used the gray. It was a more neutral color. And you could balance this out how much purple you want in or how much. You could even use like a forest green would be pretty with this. So see how quick this comes together. Don't want to over mix it. And then one more time, if you want to put a little bit. I put a little bit of the winter blue and again I didn't use a lot just a touch go over it in a few places depending how streaky you want it and look already the nice 
effect you get from using this. Now this will take a little bit longer to dry than typical acrylics because of the medium in it. So be sure that you, you know, go have a cup of coffee or fold some laundry or do something. Um, but let this dry completely before we move on to our next step. Okay, I'm sure everything is dry now. I um, used a dryer on it just to be sure before I went ahead and yes you can use a hair dryer on it or a heat gun but be careful with the heat gun they get awfully hot be sure you um, are far enough away from everything and the next thing I want to do is I want to add a little more color to this because as I said the snowmen are white so we want them to show up on the background so I'm going to add a little bit of dry brushing, which is a more subtle effect than this um, glazing that we did. And I'm going to use the color Prussian Blue, which is a very strong dark blue color. Okay, so I put some paint. This is my wet palette with the sponge underneath. And I'm going to use a, a large stencil brush because we don't want... Um, you can use a dome blender... I like how the edges are rounded on these. I think I got these from Lori Speltz, and they're my favorite stencil brushes because they're soft enough, they have rounded edges, and they're very dense, so they're nice. They don't leave too many streaks. And I also use a good quality paper towel. I use like the white shop rags, not the blue ones. I found that sometimes the blue shop rags bleed like if I'm dry brushing a white color or light color and I use it to scrub the paint off it comes out sort of blue which you wouldn't matter on this project of course but if you're doing something um, white or light it does matter so I try to look for the white shop towels or a good towel like Viva or that um, they don't have Viva I don't think here in Canada so I'm going to take my dry stencil brush, this brush has not been wet, and pick up a little bit of the Prussian blue paint and scrub it on the paper towel. And I'm working it a little bit up into the bristles, as you can see. Hold on, i got to switch my glasses. There we go. And what I want to do is just kind of Kiss the edges a little. I'm holding the brush perpendicular pretty much and medium low pressure. I'm not really pushing hard and I'm just kind of skating over the surface to deepen it. As I said, you want this to be subtle. You can see how subtle, but it's darkening it, but you're still seeing the colors over underneath it. You're not covering them completely. You don't want to have too much color on. The whole um, idea behind these many layers is that each layer is soft and subtle. And that's what makes your piece look so fun and full of depth and color. So I mean that's about it. Look at the difference that makes. Again, we're still not worrying on our edges because we're going to take care of that in a bit. And um, when this is done, you don't have to let it dry because it's dry. I'm going to take another brush. This is a little bit smaller. You can rinse your brush out, but for the sake of the camera, I'm just going to go ahead with a different brush. And this time I'm using a metallic silver. This is Deco Arts Extreme Sheen Silver, but you could use any metallic silver. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up some of the silver paint, and then I'm going to clean it off on the paper towel. This is where you don't want cheap paper towels. If you use cheap paper towels, you're going to get little the little balls into your brush, and it'll stick on your painting and be a mess and you leave a little bit more in than you would probably with the um, with the Prussian blue because 
I don't know why, but silver metallics seem to be very weak in color, you, uh, typically. I haven't found one that that's very um, opaque yet. So you just I just kind of wipe it off and then just around it. You can barely see that I know. Can you see? Let's see if we can get it to shine. There you go. It's more of an afterthought. It's subtle. But I want it on there because it, you do notice it when the sun is on it and when you're putting it under lights. So I'm going over here and there with that. And let's see if I can get it to show you. There you go. See how it looks icy? So that's pretty cool. And that's all we have to do there. And then the next step will be to shade around the edge. And in order to do that, I'm going to use Prussian Blue again. And I'm going to find my angular shader brush. Um, I'm going to use a half inch brush. You can use a 3 8 inch is probably good. You don't have to have it that thick, especially with a smaller surface like this. But um, I'm going to put my palette here so you can kind of see it. There we go. And I'm going to wet my brush first. And you could see the water going up the ferrule. And what you do by wetting it first is you're putting a barrier there so the paint doesn't get up in the fair rule and ruin your brush. So I wet my brush, blot it, and then I like using angle brushes for shading. To me, they're easier. Pick up on the corner of the brush, and then I'm going to start to go around the edge. Now see, it skips a lot. Let's see if I can pull this in a little bit. It's going to be hard to show you guys um, everything at once. That's why I use the smaller tray. So I dip the brush in water. Let's see. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. There's my water. I'm going to dip the brush in water, pick up some paint, blot it on there. And then I'm going to hold it perpendicular to my edge that I'm float shading. And I'm going to follow the shape of my tray and shade it. So we do this eight times for the eight edges. And edge shading is a real good way to practice your float shading. Because a lot of people have trouble with float shading. But this is a good example to show you um, the principles of it. You want color on the toe of the brush to fade to nothing on this is the heel of the brush, this end. So in order to do that, you need water for a wicking effect. You're going to have a lot of color here and it's going to fade out to nothing. But in order to do that, you don't want to turn your brush this way. You keep it perpendicular to whatever shape you're shading. And then you shouldn't have any problem. See, by wetting the heel part, by wetting this whole part of your surface, you're allowing that water to pull the color down. And that is the principle of float shading. See how it's stronger and it fades. And if you get a line in there that you don't like, the heel should be clean and you can kind of wipe it and move it while it's wet. The other thing I wanted to mention about float shading is that you don't have to do it all in one pass. Like I, as you could see me um, working here, I'm doing it in little strokes 
little chappy strokes and just moving the paint. You're coaxing the paint around the edges. Okay. So we're going to go around the edge of the tray with this. We'll worry about the sides later. That's the last thing we're going to do. And again, there's going to be a lot going on, a lot of layers and things. So this is a real good practice piece. All right, our float shading is dry now. And the next thing we're going to do is base coat the little snowman heads. So in order to do that, what I'm using is the smaller stencil brush. And you're going to you're going to use a brush based on the size of your pieces and how big you want your little heads to be. I um, used a bigger brush for these guys because they're going to be a little larger and I'm going to use the um, smaller brush for this. This is about, I don't know, it's about a half an inch, about a centimeter or so. So I'm going to use winter blue paint and this is going to be stippled on. I have in the pattern a little um, diagram of where I placed my snowman heads, but I really encourage you to do um, freehand because it's really not a problem. It's so easy to do. Um, what we're gonna do is just pick up some, pick up some paint. Here's a clean paper towel if you need to blot. I always keep my tray here. This is my clean water. I call that my little water. And then I have a bigger water that I rinse my brushes in. So this water is always clean. I use it for floating and details. When I need to use details on the brush, I try to keep my little water cleaner and it's closer by. But I'm going to pick up some of the um, winter blue on the edge of the stencil brush and then just randomly kind of base coat some circles on the surface. Random's hard for me, I'll be honest, but it should be easy enough to do. We're just making little little dots. It's this, this part was really hard to see on the pattern too um, because I tried to photograph it in my light tent and it just didn't want to cooperate. And while it looks like we're covering up a lot of the surface, um, we are, I guess, but it gives a good base for the snowman's faces. Because the snowmen aren't see-through, but they're bluish. So just keep going around and they don't have to be perfect. You can make big, little... Just kind of fill it in how you want. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And we're going to let these dry before we move on. Round them out though, like this blob. You can bring it down here. Okay, so I did want to show you this part because like I said on the pattern it's it's a little hard to see the blue on the blue, but it works. So we're going to let this dry before we move on. 
Okay, the blue undercoating on the little heads are dry. And next thing we're going to base in the snowman's heads. And to do that, I like using dome blenders. Again, they're like deer foot brushes, but they're, um, they have rounded edges. Here, I have a deer foot here. I can show you the difference. Your foot's flat on the top, a dome is rounder on the top. There, you can see it there. And I like them because they give softer edges for this. And again, we're going to match the size of the brush to the size of the snowman we're doing. And I am using, this is a number 10 to start with. And I have a little bit of white paint on my palette. I'm going to pick up the paint, and then if you could see the blue circles, let's see, I'll pull you in a little bit. Wait, in, in, in. There we go. There we go. Um, switch my glasses, and how I do these is just make a circle of dots, kind of. You want to keep it loose. Go around the edge first and then kind of bring it in the middle. And see how I left a little bit of, um, it's airy in between. It's not really filled in solid. You don't want it solid. This is the first layer. So I'm going to continue to work my way around. and do all the dots that I have here. All the little snowman faces. So you're only getting paint on the end of the brush, really. And if you get to the end and you have one that's close, you just kind of finish them off like that. Now, if you notice, they're not really white after the first layer, which is exactly what I wanted. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a smaller brush and we're going to go right around the edges once again to highlight the outside lines of the snowman's head and then leave the face a little bit more blue tint. So we're going to go through that again and this time we're just going to hit the outer edges and we're going to leave them nice and kind of ragged and don't leave a don't leave a stark line like that kind of blend them but the main color that we're going to add is going to be around the outside okay so concentrate on the outside and leave the inside a little bit darker And okay, there we are. Now I'm going to let these dry a little bit because we're going to put little cheeks on them and I'll go clean my brush and we'll be right back. <laughs> 